this is uh, just a little uh, short account of a project that myself and Anne um, uh, were in, have been engaged in in the last uh, uh, throughout 2021, I guess, really, uh, on the subject of uh, academic referencing in particular. Uh, so, sort of a, yes, quite a quite a major piece of academic writing. As for and basically, we want to just cater to um, the needs of our postgraduate distance learners. As you might know from Hibernia, uh, our um, two uh, courses, the two programs that we currently run, are PME. Uh, uh, masters, professional masters in education, uh, primary and post primary. So, uh, just to give a piece a bit more uh, feedback on a bit more uh, context as to what we're doing. Um, academic writing obviously is a big part of, of uh, student success and uh, certainly is the case um, with regard to these programs. Um, it's true on the sort of professional side of things. We want our student teachers upon graduation to be able to develop an argument and synthesize knowledge and evaluate evidence. Um, and also just within the programs themselves, there's a huge emphasis on uh, academic writing. One uh, thing that changed in 2020 um, when the pandemic uh, happened is that the focus of the dissertation project switched from a research-based to a literature review-based um, dissertation. So there's suddenly a greater emphasis on students' ability to handle secondary sources. So that made academic writing even more important. Uh, this saw um, a huge increase in the number of student queries uh, related to referencing in particular that uh, the digital librarian uh, received up to a third of the total number of queries uh, were uh, concerned specifically with referencing. Uh, we've also found that referencing is a very frequently consulted uh, section in our academic writing toolkit. Uh, and in terms of assessment of the programmes, uh, it that leans very heavily. Obviously, there's this school placement um, uh, aspect as well, but uh, academic writing, particular essays, form a very large part of um, assessment. There's also portfolios, artifacts, reflective writing and so forth. So uh, academic writing is really a skill worth learning and referencing within that is, um, is also quite important. Um, as we're a blended learning college, um, we provide a lot of online um, support to our students um, in the area of academic writing. Uh, it's just a few, uh, couple of examples there. A lot of it is on our uh, on our library site. Uh, a lot of these supports are, of course, asynchronous, so students would need to be quite motivated in order to um, to to, um, to to go to those. So we did find that uh, students were needing a little bit more uh, more help on that, and um, so that was something that we wanted to look at. Now, part of the sort of the evolution of this particular project came from the, as we said, the increased volume of email referencing queries. Uh, one thing we decided to do on the back of that was to update our resources and specifically update the online referencing guides that we provide to students. And that's quite a big job in itself. Uh, from that, we Partly, we wanted to encourage use of, the, of, of these resources, of the new guides and of the other bits and pieces that we have online. Uh, but you know, the question was, how do we actually do that? How do we, how do we drive students to these? And we came up with um, a suggestion of just uh, doing some drop-in workshops, some drop-in live um, Zoom um, webinars, uh, specifically to look at uh, what students were uh, finding difficulty in, in referencing and uh, you know, to give them direct help as needed. Uh, just a word on the updating of the referencing guides. We adopted a user-centered approach, uh, you know, removed an awful lot of um, anachronisms and redesigned uh, really for, for ease of use, which was something that uh, I think was uh, creating a barrier to students actually using the guide. Um, again, this was very much informed by the kind of feedback we were getting from the kinds of queries that the that the digital librarian was receiving. Uh, and basically, it's our own pro professional domain knowledge uh, as uh, as digital uh, digital educators and technologists, but also consideration of our own experiences of being postgraduate students ourselves. Then from that, from those beginnings, we just wanted to look a little bit more at uh, referencing and the scholarship around referencing and just to you know give ourselves a guide to see if we were 
going the right way about um, creating these kind of supports. And, you know, we found a couple of quite interesting things that really, I think, spoke to us, or spoke to the, the, the what we felt was Hibernian students' experiences, um, such as, um, you know, plagiarism and anxiety is obviously a huge one, uh, and that tends to take over a lot of the um, discourse around referencing. Um, enabling students to find their own voice that you know they're not just using sources that they are actually able to use sources while at the same time using that as um, a way of releasing their own academic voice we find that uh, it's quite common that support provision for referencing is very inconsistent and it often falls between the cracks and um, in that nobody's really quite sure who's responsible for it is it a faculty thing is it a more general support thing um is it a library uh, library responsibility uh, it and tends to it does tend to get uh, overlooked sometimes uh, because of that uh, and then obviously there's challenges supporting online distance learners uh, you know being able to provide both synchronous and asynchronous um, assistance for them and embedded approach uh, which is usually which in the literature is the, the recommended way to support referencing it isn't always possible and it isn't possible in Hibernia at the moment so we did have to sort of uh, work to find ways around that so just to look at some of the key support themes that we identified uh, for constructing the synchronous uh, workshops, we identified a few themes. Again, these were based on the kind of the feedback we were getting from students about what, what they were struggling with. But I think just you can see in the middle of the, the, the model there, our real aim was to deepen students' understanding of referencing, of the, its meaning, its purpose, just to give them a, a chance to step back really, really and focus more on um, just why you do it rather than the mechanics of doing it and you know how you do it what are the rules just it's more how do you do it why do you, why is it a good thing to reference uh, the workshops were a series of zoom webinars and we encouraged students to submit their own questions and we did our best to deal with them uh, and again we wanted to promote and model use of the reference and guide as much as possible uh, we scheduled them about every five to six weeks uh, students have obviously a very heavy uh, program of, of study, so we didn't want to overburden them. So our findings uh, from this is, um, well, we looked at a few things. When we looked at the engagement with the reference and guides, we used um, Moodle analytics to, and library analytics to look at these. Uh, you can see November 20th was when the guides were updated, and we did see that there is definitely an increase in engagement with uh, both the reference, the full reference and guide and the quick reference and guide. Now, we haven't really looked very closely beyond this at, you know, why this might be, what are the, you know, what factors might have been bringing uh, students to, to these more, more frequently, but we were quite happy to see that, and we were particularly happy to see that the quick referencing guides uh, just were suddenly um, being used much more um, in a way that they weren't before. So that's, again, something we need to dig into, but um, it's, it's something One that's minute, quite encouraging. Harry. Okay. And the feedback surveys, we just survey students as to how they, um, what they liked or disliked about the um, the workshops. Generally, quite positive, quite a positive level of, uh, of feedback there. Uh, people did find it um, helpful. Uh, from the information, from the sort of free text that uh, we were given, we really found that there was, that, that this was a huge gap in students' knowledge. And, you know, as postgraduates, that's, that's quite interesting. You know, we can't really assume that postgraduates know everything about referencing. So um, there was quite a lot of very good feedback on that. Uh, we have a few suggestions for improvement, which we will we'll be implementing in the next series, you know, mainly around how much time is given to students um, actual queries as opposed to the teams. And uh, yeah, we've got a number of uh, other future plans. We've made the videos available, uh, the webinar videos available uh, on the library site. We're going to do a bit more qualitative exploration, I think. Um, we're obviously going to run a few more drop-in webinars and uh, hopefully try to bring in uh, faculty, faculty members of the School of Education a bit more and maybe try to go for a slightly more embedded approach um, next time. And obviously keep updating all the existing uh, asynchronous uh, sources that we have. That's a very quick whistle stop. So uh, thank you very much and happy to answer any questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Irene. Very much appreciate that and appreciate you uh, just uh, bumping up the, the uh, order on the programme a little bit earlier. Uh, so thanks to, to you and Anne on that. Uh, are there questions for, for Irene on, on the presentation? Rob, you have your hand up. 
Yeah, thanks, Gavin, and thanks, Irene. Really, really interesting presentation, and and, and well done to you and to you and Anne for 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 uh, 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 launching this initiative. I just uh, I I saw that you said that students' fear of plagiarism was 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 one of their factors, and I'm wondering, do you currently um or or was there any um conversation around the use of um text matching tools as formative um tools to help students? Um, avoid plagiarism by by inspecting text, ma text matching reports uh, ahead of a submission. Was there any kind of conversation around that? Yeah, I think we could probably do a bit more conversation around it. We do use um, text matching software. We use um, uh, what was for me, Erkin is now our regional. I just don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it's uh, we've we are using a Moodle plugin that enables students to submit um, submit their drafts, uh, get the sort of get the um, text matching feedback. Um, you know that is part of the uh, part of the, the the whole upload process within Moodle. Um, the extent of their involvement with the text matching software beyond that is is, is pretty small. I would think um, it's it's something I would like to look at a bit more. Uh, I do think that they probably do it very close to deadline time. Um, so they may not actually have very much time to, uh, you know, resubmit, study the reports, uh, identify areas. I think that's something that they would probably need a little, uh, little scaffolding with. And um, I mean, as we all know, it's uh, it's very often a kind of last minute, uh, a very last minute thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it would definitely have its uses. That's for sure. Yeah. And I think it might be fair to say that um, one of the, the the issues we found was that while the students are quite concerned with the issue of plagiarism, it, it was sort of obscuring a greater understanding and a deeper understanding of the purpose of referencing. And so actually one of one of our tasks was really to try and while still highlighting the importance of avoiding plagiarism was to try and broaden that understanding and give them a deeper appreciation of what they were doing to move away from it as a task that was only about avoiding plagiarism and getting the technical aspects of referencing correct to a more rounded understanding whereby they understood the purpose and to um, kind of back up their own voice with the with the literature that came before and all those things. So it was an interesting, um, I suppose, relationship that we had with this plagiarism idea in the first place where we were trying to bring the focus slightly um, away from that to some degree. Yeah, and I think that I think that's a challenge for all of us. Really, we all get very hung up on the technical bits around referencing and 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 doing it and doing it correctly without actually considering the value of referencing and the purpose of referencing. So it's great that you were bringing that to the fore. Well and it really came out in the in the literature that we 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 looked at when we were considering all of this. That that was a a, a concern across the board, um, and it really was um, kind of hampering the students' ability to get to grips with referencing because they were seeing it purely as a mechanical um, thing that they were doing without having the appreciation of the purpose. And that was actually stopping them from uh, really getting to grips with it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Mark, you have your hand up. Yeah, it's on that point exactly that Anne's bringing up. Um, if we can reduce the rationalisation that students have for plagiarism by explaining to them the value uh, and importance of it, I think we'll do an awful lot better than we will by trying to match similarity reports and, and uh, catch them. I, I think if we're better off taking a preventive approach rather than um, uh, uh, trying to catch them later. Uh, so Anne, uh, it resonates so much with me with what you're saying there. And I think the real way to stop it is to, to get students on board and get them to buy into uh, the value of plagiarism.